Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Fluently Forward mini episode edition. Whether you are listening on the podcast or if you are watching on YouTube, yes, we're starting to do Wednesday mini episodes that are also on YouTube for visual effect because today we are talking about Prince Harry, his blind items since his memoir is coming out, and I just want to show a little visual, you know, effects to go with some of these blind items. Some of them are about his hair plugs. Maybe I want to show you pictures of his hair, stuff like that. Now I am a little bit trepidatious to even talk about this because Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are like the Johnny Depp Amber Heard of the internet where there are two sides who froth at the mouth when you talk about either of these people. And I just have to say, if you froth at the mouth on either side, I'm judging you a little bit. And I think it does go hand in hand. If you think that Meghan Markle is Satan reincarnated, you have an issue. But then there are also people who in response to the psychos out there calling Meghan Markle like this basically conniving mastermind who's like risen up from the crypts to take over the royal family, right? In response to that, you have a bunch of people who are basically saying Meghan Markle is the most talented, ambitious, creative, thoughtful, generous woman to have ever walked the planet. And then I think that's kind of a disservice to all of the people out there who are doing huge amounts of philanthropy or actually fulfilling their million dollar Spotify contracts that they were given. So what do I think about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle? The same thing I think about all celebrities. I think that they're a little bit pansexual. I think that they've probably done drugs. And I think that they are shades of gray like we all are. So nobody's perfectly good. Nobody's perfectly evil. Let's get into Prince Harry's blind items because I'm just here for the gossip, right? So his memoir is officially out now. And there have been so many different excerpts that have been leaked. But I mean, who leaked it? I think he did. I think the PR people leaked it. Some of my favorites were calling Prince William's hair loss alarming. That was a little bit fun. Um, Harry talking about a fight where Prince William allegedly knocked him to the ground and there was a dog dish that was broken. It was a big deal. How Harry and William begged their father, King Charles, to not marry Camilla. I think that's I think that's very interesting. I'm not going to get into it, but you know, Harry is Meghan Markle's second husband. And this whole notion of do you marry for love in the royal family or do you marry for duty? And if you do one, do you allow people to do the other? You know, it's, it's a very interesting concept there. Prince Harry also in his memoir claims to have killed 25 people in two tours of Afghanistan during his decade serving in the British Army. So for anyone who's hating on Meghan Markle, I mean, we've got a murderer in our miss. 25 people. Very interesting. He also says that William and Kate encouraged him to don the Nazi uniform that he wore at the 2005 costume party. And then he also speaks about the rumor that his real father is not Charles, but one of Diana's lovers. And he called the rumor sadism. So that made me feel a little bit weird because I certainly have written blog posts about Prince Harry's father being James Hewitt, the writing instructor uh, that Diana did admit to having an affair with. Long story about that. We will get into it in the blind items. But basically, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see this is what James looks like and this is what Harry looks like. It's not my fault that I have eyeballs and they look literally identical to each other. But years ago, I wrote a blog post about how I thought that, you know, maybe there could have been a family relation there. And one of the YouTube clips that I referenced in that blog post, there was a direct quote of Princess Diana in an interview saying how she had an affair with James, right? Both her and Charles, we know that they cheated on each other. And a couple months after I put that blog post out, the YouTube video was wiped from the internet and it's no longer available to access. We will get into that when we get into the blind items and what better time to do it than right now, right? So I'm gonna start with two blind items here that are related to Prince Harry's book because I just think it's of the moment. The first blind item, the illiterate one, Meghan Markle, had multiple meetings with the ghostwriter writing her husband's biography. She wanted to make sure that there was a dumpster full of dirt in the book. Honestly, good for you. I'm so sick of all these celebrities who put out these memoirs and autobiographies and documentaries and they don't say 
anything about themselves. Like Taylor Swift's Miss Americana documentary, that was a PR piece. You cannot have a documentary where you are the only person interviewed. That's not a documentary. You know what I mean? That's one source. That's one primary source. You can't call it a documentary. Who else was interviewed? Anyway, this video for another time. Second blind item. Speaking of the funeral, the publisher of an upcoming book was told there will need to be some changes to the manuscript. Is it a throw all the bad stuff out or is it a throw extra bad stuff in because of what happened at the funeral and with the publicist? At this point, it is some changes. So that blind item seems to allege that at the funeral of the queen, something happened with the family and that led because as we now know from the leaks, there's a lot of bad stuff in there that must have led to Harry signing off and having those more like explicit details in the memoir because of whatever happened at the funeral. And he talked about this a little bit in his 60 Minutes interview, how members of the family flew to the interview on a plane without inviting him. There were different allusions to that when he talked with Anderson Cooper. Okay, other blind items about Prince Harry. This is now not related to the memoir. What is left out of the documentary is that the ginger-haired one was spending upwards of $40,000 per month on travel for the illiterate one when they were dating because she needed first class for the every two-week trip. And that's about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. That's a little juicy, but I don't know if it's too juicy. First of all, I would think that the royals would have enough miles and points that you would get automatically bumped up. You wouldn't have to, I mean, this is just me thinking as a points type of girl. The second one is, I just think of all of those girls on seeking arrangements and, I don't know, being flown out to Dubai to be porta potty girls, allegedly. If they're getting first class tickets, so should someone dating the prince, you know? I sit in economy. If I am in the middle seat and Meghan Markle has the window and she's going to see Prince, that just doesn't make sense. So, interesting, but like, I don't think anyone's like a, it's not a finger wagging blind item. Okay. Next one. Is it true and everlasting love if you are the ginger haired one and have to sneak cigarettes only when you leave the house without your wife? Shouldn't you be able to tell her that you haven't managed to quit? That's interesting. That kind of reminds me of the plot in How I Met Your Mother where Marshall was like hiding his cigarette smoking from Lily. So I think that's a little bit interesting. Does he smoke? I don't know. He's probably stressed. I'm sure he's doing other things too. Allegedly in his memoir, he talks about what has he said? He's talked about alcohol, cocaine, and shrooms. What did I tell you? All celebrities do drugs, and they're a little bit pansexual. Okay, next blind item. The ginger-haired one is looking for a place to shill for his new book, but the reporters must agree to pre-screen questions in advance and basically having to give up any shred of journalistic integrity. Sounds perfect for the anchor slash heir. And that is about Anderson Cooper interviewing Prince Harry. That, I think, is pretty typical when you're promoting something, having questions or at least a list of things that you can or can't ask people. I'm going to go on just a slight tangent here, and that is just has to do with the ABC network and the royal family. We obviously know about Prince Andrew and his ties to Jeffrey Epstein, which anytime someone bitches about Meghan Markle, you also have to say something about Prince Andrew. It's insane that we have an actual alleged <laughs> uh, child. I, I don't know if I can say it on YouTube, but you know what I'm talking about. You know what Prince Andrew did. It wasn't arts and crafts, okay? Anyway, there was an anchor on ABC years ago, Amy something, and she was caught on hot wire, hot camera, live, basically saying that she was pitching the story of Jeffrey Epstein to ABC and she had everything about him, his connections to Clinton, his connections to the royal family. And when she pitched this to ABC, they shut her down and they said, who's Jeffrey Epstein? Nobody knows who that is. It's not going to be interesting. And the royal palace ended up finding out that they had the story and they threatened her and ABC a million different ways and basically said, if you run the story, we will pull the plug. You'll never get anything from us again and you won't be able to cover the wedding that's coming up. So I just think dirty, rotten shit goes on with the royal family, especially when it comes to Prince Andrew. Why 
the island exists with Epstein and we're all just like going about our lives. Like it's no big deal that like all of these big wigs went to this island to do God knows what on it. So real quick, I'm just going to insert what Amy was saying about the royal family and the ABC News Network right here. I've had the story for three years. I've had this interview with Virginia Roberts. We would not put it on the air. Um, first of all, I was told, who's Jeffrey Epstein? No one knows who that is. This is a stupid story. Um, then the palace found out that we had her whole allegations about Prince Andrew and threatened us a million different ways. Um, we were so afraid we wouldn't be able to interview Kate and Will say, oh, that we, that, that also quashed the story. She told me everything. She had pictures, she had everything. It was unbelievable what we had, Clinton, we had everything. Do I think he was killed? A hundred percent. Yes, I do. Because you want he made his whole living blackmailing people. There were a lot of men in those planes, a lot of men who visited that island, a lot of powerful men who came into that apartment. All right, back to the more fun, salacious gossip. We have another blind item. Of course, the illiterate one and her husband are going to kiss the butt of the permanent A-list singer. He is the one who loans them his private jet for free. All I can think of, too, is when people show their feet online and somebody goes, for free? <laughs> for free. So yeah, that's about Meghan Markle, Prince Harry, and Elton John, allegedly. And I'm just going to say, um, honestly, kind of cost effective, right? Because if Harry was spending $40,000 a month, allegedly, for first class kiss -its, and all you have to do is just, you know, suck up a little bit to Elton John and get that for free, that's a pretty good deal. All right, this is kind of similar to what I was talking about before when we talk about that sadistic rumor of who Prince Harry's father is. Here's the blind. There are about 45 minutes of a world-famous interview with a foreign-born permanent A-list celebrity, Princess Diana, who is now dead. In the footage that was edited, she discusses the parentage of one of her children, Prince Harry. Okay, all I'm saying is I'm putting up the picture one more time. Especially the side profile of Prince Harry and James, it's just like, what are the odds? You know what I mean? I just wish that when people were calling out conspiracy theories, they would at least nod to how similar it was. Like if Prince Harry said, it's not true, but damn, he does look a lot like me. I think I would be more likely to believe him that Charles is actually his father. Is he? We'll see. We'll find out. Okay. Another blind item. This one really gets my goat. This very recognizable person who is currently attempting a new career has been strangely out of view for the last week. This is due to an emergency top-up surgery that he needed on his hair plugs, which had started to fall out suddenly. I believe it. Uh, I could see him definitely getting hair plugs. I am proud of guys when they get hair plugs, and I'm not even being sarcastic. I truly am. I think that it looked good on Elon Musk. I think it looks good on guys. I think women are doing all sorts of nips and tucks to themselves. And if guys want to do it too, especially if you have a face that we're looking at a lot, why not do it? The entire time Mark Zuckerberg was on trial for whatever happened with Facebook, I was just watching and I just was thinking, Lori Hill needs to get on him because I have a couple suggestions of Little nips and tucks he could be doing, you know what I mean? Just make yourself look a little bit better. Okay, and the last blind item I am reading here really intrigued me because it has to do allegedly with YouTube. Now, if you watch the Meghan Markle Prince Harry documentary on Netflix, you'll know that they dedicated a big portion of the video to talking about bots and bot farms and... Uh, how did they kind of describe it? Like a coordinated online effort to smear and attack Meghan Markle. And it's interesting, one of the YouTubers that I watched, Shallon Lester, they used her video as somebody who was participating in this like online coordinated attack of Meghan Markle. She did a whole video about it. Check it out, it's very interesting. This is the blind item. It doesn't appear that the conglomerate YouTube itself issued a directive. Rather, the takedown of the videos negative to the illiterate one, Meghan Markle, and her husband are coming from a PR firm slash bot farm, which sends complaints nonstop asking that the videos be taken down. The videos are then removed and it is up to the creator to try to get them back online, which rarely ever works unless your videos are making the conglomerate a lot of money. So we'll see if this video stays up on YouTube. If not, you can always access it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. But it's a very interesting 
idea, this world of are there bots online? Who are the bots? Um, and how people reference them. We all remember that iconic story of when Rita Ora said, like, if my tweet gets 100,000 retweets, I'll release new music. And then like nobody retweeted it. And she went, I got hacked. <laughs> I got hacked. It was like a bot. I would have never done that. So it's going to be interesting as tech continues to develop, where are we going to see the world of bots going? Where are we going to see deep fakes going? Everything with that. So let me know what you think of these blind items. There are a little bit more when it comes to Meghan Markle, but that will probably have to be another video for another time. We'll have to check it out. So let me know, are you going to be reading Spare? And what do you think of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle? I will catch you guys for a full hour long episode on Monday for Fluently Forward. Thanks for watching and thanks for hanging out. Bye guys.